picking up where we left off. We had established that we didn't need cases in this problem, so we solved for lambda in each of the first three equations. We set those equal to each other. At the end of the last video, I paired off these first two characterizations of lambda, and from that, I was able to get that y is equal to x. Now, I'm just going to work with this last pairing, that xz over x plus z equals xy over y plus x. I think I've got enough room to do that here. If I cross multiply, I'll get xz times y plus x equals xy times x plus z. If I distribute, I get xyz plus x squared z equals x squared y plus xyz. I can subtract the xyz from both sides, so x squared z equals x squared y. Excellent. Okay. But now, again, we're in octant 1. X isn't 0, so I can divide by it. So Z is equal to Y. But we already had that X was equal to Y. So what we've got is now X and Y and Z are all the same. And if you remember the answer that we found when we did this back in 14.7, that's exactly what we got. So now I know from equations 1, 2, and 3 that x equals y equals z. Time to use equation 4 and plug into the constraint to figure out what they all are. Okay. So I'm just going to call them all x because they're all equal to x. So xy becomes x squared. yz becomes x squared. xz becomes x squared. And that's equal to 32. So 3x squared equals 32 x squared equals 32 thirds, x equals y equals z equals the positive square root of 32 thirds. Again, if this was purely a math problem, I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of the fact that x, y, and z were all positive. That saved us an awful lot of work in this case because it meant we didn't have to deal with cases here, and it meant we could divide by variables. Oh, it's lovely. Okay. But we get the same answer using the method of Lagrange multipliers. Again, though, I can't emphasize enough that when you're not working with the entire level surface or the entire level curve, you have to check to see whether the additional boundaries that you introduce are going to affect the problem. Often they will. In this case, we were able to say that, hey, if I'm on one of the coordinate planes, which are the boundaries of octant 1, my volume is 0. If I'm in the middle of octant 1, somewhere my volume is positive, we were looking for the maximum positive value within octant 1. 